Hey everyone, it's Jack. I had an intro to this video, but I think this clip just opens the video better. Love you. Good job, Pinky. That clip is from the most recent episode of Drag Race Down Under, where the editors decided to leave in a really small meow that came out of Rue because I guess Ivana was wearing a cat suit. And let me tell you, I am so thankful that they did. I love moments like this. I've done a full video on this before, and I decided why not let's do it again. Let's go through some more unhinged and crazy Drag Race editing moments. Whether these moments were deliberate or a mistake or somewhere in between, these are moments that have stuck with me over time. I do everything for myself over here on YouTube. YouTube, it's my job and part of my job is to edit and even if I don't have the most professional clean cut edits out there it's something that I still really really enjoy and I feel like I'm able to see the actions of editors on other projects better than the average person whether it's a really funny edit or a mistake or just a weird choice it really makes me notice and appreciate the unsung heroes on shows like Drag Race to me it's like when you can hear human error in a professionally recorded song I'm just happy that there's still a human doing it it really grounds a piece of media for me and just makes me appreciate the product even more so big shout out to the editors and now let's talk about some bad edits. <laughs> I tried to group the clips together to make it a little more coherent and easier to follow and personally I want to start with one of my favorite editing choices, bad dubbing and audio cuts. I've to splice audio together all the time because I can barely form sentences and I stutter a lot but still I don't think I know a tenth of the pain that the editors have to go through on this show. I would say 90% of the confessionals that we listen to are cut down in some sort of way and a majority of the time the dialogue is very unnoticeably changed. Cuts are made of these confessionals to just keep the pacing up for the episode, for the dialogue in general, because people naturally pause, but on a TV show, you have to keep up that energy. So while they're doing audio cuts, they'll cut to workroom B-roll to prevent like a 2012 YouTuber situation where they're jumping around. It's such a simple way to hide it, but it's so effective every time. Well, actually not every time. Sometimes the way people talked in a clip is hard to work around and cut. They say a word that's too vague, so they cut in another word, or they have to do a major change because there was like a production change. The one that stuck with me the most is Diabetes Runway for the Tutu Challenge. I talked about it briefly last time, but I didn't let the audio play, so I wanna play as much as I can here. This entire outfit is made out of recycled materials. The jacket is a thrifted jacket. The crown is a duct tape roll covered in construction paper. I'm wearing 11 inch platform heels. I have no idea how this one got so messed up unless she was talking about her outfit like different times and they had to like splice that together. But as I was getting a clip for a later entry, we saw it again with someone like Jimbo just a little more subtly. It's really shocking that Heidi gave up on this opportunity. I'm so bummed because we came into this competition as friends and I really envisioned us being in the finale together. After all of this drama, who do I feel like I can trust? Nobody. Even though they sound insanely robotic, they still are from the same time. The ones that are funnier are when it's an insert of a word from a completely different time. We saw this with Angeria, like I mentioned in last video. Because we're getting to the point of the competition where the judges have to notice you. But my new personal favorite is when Rue is interviewing Anitra and talks about the Marsha lip sync. You flipped over Marsha. But it's very clear she forgot Marsha's name, so they just inserted another clip from another time. These are the types that you have to be resourceful for because sometimes the confession just is too vague. So sometimes you just gotta hope that there's another clip that fits in relatively seamlessly. One of the interesting ones that reveals more of production's intentions is when they have to completely redub an audio. The most infamous that kept me really aware of it is All Stars 4 with the double crowning, which is the most obvious overdub of anything. Is for the first time in All Stars history, you are both winners, baby. That is just a crazy, crazy edit in general, and we see this type of edit towards the end of seasons, like finales or right before them. We saw it with season 14, where they filmed a Willow elimination in only a top four, and I think that's what Rue announced at the reunion, but because they ended up going with the double Shantae ending, they had to redub Rue saying a top five instead. Now, from the stage of RuPaul's Drag Race live at Flamingo Las Vegas, and our final five queens. But I think the one that's the most revealing or the one that's trying to do the most damage control is the All Stars 7 one where they insert Rue saying, Based on this lip sync and your performance all season long, 
I've made my decision. We'll get back to this lip sync a little later, trust me. But there was a big intention behind the insert of based on your performance over the course of the whole season. These types of post-filming audio inserts goes to show that the show is never really done filming or planning. Sometimes they make a change really late in the game after they already filmed all their footage and they kind of have to do something really quick. Most of the time, I think it's because they're trying to make a big decision for the better or just a big clarification, but these ones definitely lead to a slippery, slippery slope of speculation. Winner, winner to chicken dinner. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 100k by the end of the year and with your help, I could totally do that. Majority of you guys aren't subscribed, so I would just love to have you here. And lastly, for audio cuts, we're getting more into the sound effect or voice line territory. There are some really memorable sound effects from the show, a lot from the recent seasons. I remember the pork chop one, regardless of if I want to or not. The pork chop. What? And the It's Chocolate sound, though I think it sounds like Among Us, I think is really funny and just dramatic the way they did it. It's chocolate. The most iconic one is the rattlesnake sound. I can only ever hear Drag Race when I hear this. I'm not gagging. I mean, I'm gagging it from like the smell. It's honestly just the perfect reality show sound. The early seasons also do something really, really funny with how they repeat voice lines a lot. JJ Lee walks in on season five, says that she is a really laughy queen, and then they continue to play the exact same laughing clip over and over again. She laughs a lot. <laughs> I just like to be fabulous and fun. <laughs> hey, Rue. <Ryu. laughs> I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> and the one that takes me out, the one that I can't justify in any way other than they were just trying to mess with the edit, is the audio clip of Jiggly saying very San Tropez like three times in one episode. I love you for you. Very San Tropez. Bright colors. Very San Tropez. Because my outfit is really a swimsuit. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Very San Tropez. Two of those being back to back, not even really hiding it. But they threw the clip in anyways to, I don't know, provide clarification or just, I don't know. Let's now move on to some shady cuts. These are moments where Queen's reactions to things are put following someone saying something. Sometimes this is a natural occurrence, while other times it's completely from a different time. A moment like this with Jocelyn and Bianca comes to mind. You're a butch yeah. queen. Where are you gonna draw your inspiration? Bianca Del Rio. <laughs> <laughs> they did a lot of this back in seasons four to six where they would have someone say something and then it would cut to a reaction but then like in the background of the same clip the person would be on a different side of the room they've gotten a lot better about the continuity of people though and it's become a lot more natural with the cuts this is a lot more recent and it's my absolute favorite any time that alexis cried on all stars eight we would get a cut to jessica just looking at her it was not lost on the editors how much alexis cried and how jessica was just so fed up with it so i'm glad they played into it I know that when our lives have been the darkest, it's been this thing that we do. Out of all the shows in the franchise, I do think that Canada has the funniest editors, and I'll get back into that in a little bit. But the shadiest, shadiest thing they did was in Not Sorry About It, where they cut to everyone messing up at the end. How this wasn't like a bottom five or six lip sync, I will never know. But one of the clips that was the most mentioned in my community posts and also back in the day was season 14's Untucked episode two, where anytime they mentioned being queer, being in the LGBTQ community, it would cut to Maddie, and then they would do like a little metal symbol sound effect. As a kid, like you're, especially as a gay person, like you always like, oh my God, I don't even know why I'm gonna go show up, but like. The sound effects every time it cut to Maddie were interesting because it almost framed her as like a villain or something for being there. But I'm really glad that the fandom has fallen in love with Maddie, especially since her YouTube channel. Maddie, if you would like to have me on your channel, I would love that. Like with Alexis crying, it's not lost on the editors, the irony and the situation of them talking about being a part of this community and Maddie being the first straight contestant. And that's kind of the intention of these cuts in general, it's acknowledging things that the viewers are thinking about and it kind of justifies what they are thinking. The editors are saying, yeah, don't worry, we see this too, we know the elephant in the room, let's address this in any way we can, let's cut to someone. Another very common style of editing in reality TV is twisting the words of people in confessionals in order to make it fit like their storyline. It happens in basically every show, Drag Race included, and they've gotten a lot better at hiding it. One of the most twisted segments that completely buried a queen for basically no reason was Max 
Max on season 7. This clip has been long since dissected, but for those who don't know, Max was a frontrunner on season 7, but it was very clear that they didn't really care for her actually. She had two wins at this point, but Michelle was getting on her constantly for wearing grey wigs. Anyways, I'm getting off track, she did really bad in Snatch Game, and then she was getting critiques from the judges, and her corset was too tight, so she loosened it, and they basically just put a pause in production, it happens, it happened on Down Under really recently too. But while Max was resting, and they were resetting for production, Rue asked her to sing a song just to pass the time, and she did that. And then they twisted it into Max taking advantage of the moment, and being like this ultimate diva, or just like an attention seeker, when Rue asked her to sing it in the first place, and she was about to get eliminated. I guess it would make sense, and it would be interesting for them to like set up a storyline going forward of her being like this attention seeking diva, which was like kind of sort of in line with her storyline on the season up to that point, but definitely not this far, and after this, she was just eliminated. So there truly was no reason to put this in and bury her in the edit on the way out, other than the fact that they just kind of wanted to do it. Even without context of what happened, it's just a really weirdly edited clip. I don't think that Max would just burst out singing like this. And that was missing. And I uh, hate to say it that- It looks like Max is okay. coming apart. I apologize. Can we get some help from Max? Oh, bitch, here we go. Cue the dramatics. You could tell she's the actress. Max, are you okay? So I can quite be call of a night sensation. So I think just with a little bit of common sense, you can come to the conclusion that it was edited a lot. They used to let the contestants wear whatever they wanted each day in the confessionals, but now they have a confessional look. And that's because they would splice clips together of contestants saying things, but sometimes they would be in different outfits, so it's very clear that it wasn't the same thing they were talking about. I love my girl Stacy, but I don't feel that she's completely confident in what she's saying, so I'm wondering, is she gonna be able to pull this off? But something else that they still do today that I do really love is in the coming up segments of the show, they will twist those words around. They'll take the judging critiques and Queen's reactions and just kind of mishmash them and make it seem like someone's really successful when they're actually not, or vice versa. Or there's things like in the season six intro, one of Bianca's best jokes from the comedy episode, it's twisted to seem like she snapped on the judges and is just saying the most outrageous things. I will show you versatility when Santino wins a sewing competition and Visage wears a fucking turn Turtleneck. When in reality, they ate that joke up in the actual episode. I will show you versatility when Santino wins a sewing competition and Visage wears a fucking turtleneck. You hear me? <laughs> It's really obvious why they do this in the coming up segments. It keeps people invested over the commercial break and they want to keep watching. In the recent seasons, I do think they have gotten a lot tamer. It's a very stark difference between them tricking us to think that Ivy is confessing her love to Jinx, but I do think that this is a form of positive manipulation to keep the viewer invested. Now I just want to talk about some random examples of the editors being the most unserious people on the planet. Like on season 9 when Trinity is giving this really intense monologue about not taking anything for granted because there's so much competition and it's in cut with her helping Valentina take off the black bars, and then it finishes with a zoom in on her ass, completely cutting any tension. Last video, I talked about the pillow fight on All Stars 5 being a really intense monologue from Jujube, in her cut with them just having a pillow fight. And we kind of got a sequel to this on All Stars 8, with Candy and Jimbo fake fighting and then pulling each other's wigs off. Do you think I came all the way from another fucking country with all my fucking best goddamn drag just to bring it back the fuck home? Then you better guess the fuck again, bitch. There's no crown that would ever fit that big ass head, you bitch. <laughs> you nasty <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I have the, the slow-mo screams take me out. The intro to each Drag Race episode is kind of like clockwork at this point. We know what's going to happen. It's always going to result in a dun 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 dun. And then there's some sort of comedic beat or a serious beat. And then it goes into the intro of Rue talking about the prizes. We need y'all gone because y'all are taking up space. But I'm glad they are able to switch it up and not give full serious or full funny the whole time. It leaves us on our toes just a little bit. Like I said earlier about the Canada editors, I think they are hilarious. If you want a main example of that, look no further than season three with Miss Fierce Alicious just being Miss Fierce Alicious. Fierce gave them a lot to work with, and I think they had a really fun time editing around her, basically giving her a whole recap at one point. I'm not happy with you at all. She is mad. The reaction is kind of the most. Seems like sabotage. Feels like sabotage. If the saboteur wants to get out of my way. And this scene in the workroom with her and Kimmy writing the script is one of the funniest comedic beats of the entire show. Jokes are starting to flow. The creative juices are sloshing around our very gorgeous brains. <laughs>
And I think someone similar to her is Jinx on All Star 7. The editors had a blast editing around all of the queens from that season. One of the most commendable things that they can do is turn just like hours of them working on like outfits for a design challenge into something funny and entertaining. Like the entire sequence of Jinx making her outfit in All Star 7 for the legendary looks challenge. I go back and watch that because of how funny she is and how much the edit helps that out. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh shit. Okay, well, I'm gonna go cry in the bathroom for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but I think where the editors are the most unserious is in Untucked. They take roughly an hour of footage of people talking, sometimes there's no fighting, sometimes there's a lot of fighting, and they just turn it into TV gold. But specifically for fights in Untucked, it's already entertaining, but just by the way they edit things, they make it 10 times more entertaining. Mimi I'm First vs Everyone was already going to be a hit that made All Stars 1 basically all worth it, but some of the most iconic parts of that fight are Tammy Brown saying ridiculous things that don't have any context. But you already did this! girl. Oh, well, come on, Teletubby. Teleport us to Mars. What the fuck? Is, is this bitch for real? And once you actually break down the scene, you know that Tammy isn't just randomly blurting out these things while everyone else is talking. But the way they portray Tammy on the screen, she would totally do this, so I'm glad that they just inserted that in. Or another really, really popular one, Serena on season 5, it was going to be an amazing fight already. But the way they repeated the laughs, you know that they're looping it, but it's just so overdramatic and so entertaining. <laughs> My absolute favorite though, something that is so creative and just so smart of them to do is on season 4 when Jeremy and Sharon are fighting for like the 20th time or something, I don't know. In the earlier seasons of Untucked, there were two rooms that the queens would go in to film and a lot of the time halfway through filming Untucked, there would be this clip of Rue coming on the screen telling them to move rooms. So they inserted a clip here to make it look like they were trying to get the queens to move but they were ignoring their request because they were just fighting so much. Yeah, I you cut me off in defense. Ladies. It's true, you say it every day. Okay, then I'll just shut up. Ladies, because you put your shit on the table. Silence. Silence. I don't give a shit. The fact is, you're trying to make me seem like a fake bitch when you've done the same shit. And then it cuts to B-roll of Rue just kind of sitting there thinking, but it looks like she's mad at them. And then in one of the funniest things that they didn't have to do, but I am so glad they did, they got a clip of Dita sitting in the other room, pretending like she's waiting for them to be there so she can play a game or talk to them, and they just aren't going because they're fighting so much. And they took the audio of the fight in the room over, and they made it seem like they were fighting so loudly that Dita can hear it through the walls. It reminds me of like a Lee Dawson edit. I could totally see him doing something like this. It is absolutely hilarious. I definitely do like the modern Drag Race edit because it's a lot more clean cut and honest, but something about the golden age of like season four to six, there are so many twisted things, crazy choices that they made, and it's so entertaining to look back on. Back rolls. And finally, I just want to mention that one season seven untucked where that clip of Katya is used like three times and none of them make sense. They didn't need to cut to a reaction of her any of those times. And the clip in general is just not shot well. It's shaky. It's like it's about to focus in on her. And somehow it just kept popping up. I think it was genuinely just a mistake. That third one especially is so funny because Pearl is like talking about maybe going home and then it cuts to Katya looking away from her. And then it cuts to another clip of her looking at her. Great. I'm wearing just as much green as violet is. Let's be real. Statuation that the judges have with Max. You glued two e I at least wanted y'all to know that you've all been very amazing. There's honestly a lot more clips, a lot more unhinged scenes, a lot of things. Maybe I'll wait another year and do another one of these videos. But I do want to close on one lip sync, like I mentioned earlier with All Star 7. Let's talk about the Swish Swish lip sync. Shortly after I released the previous edits video, the Swish Swish lip sync happened and people were upset because of the way it's edited. Already, I think it's a really weird finale song because I don't think it's climactic in any way. But I think the most iconic part of the song is Nikki's verse, which was basically cut out of the 
this lip sync. So like I mentioned earlier, they did a rough audio dub inserting the statement that based on the performance of the whole season, signifying that's how they were going to base the win, not on just this lip sync. And they did this because Jinx had an amazing performance across the whole season, winning five challenges, doing just well in basically everything except design. But if we're going based off of only this lip sync, Monet wiped the floor. We all know that. They tried with this edit to make it look even. They really, really tried. But I mean, if you're going to cut out the entire Nikki verse, you know that Monet ate that up. It was rumored that Jinx just stood there and watched Monet rap it. And that's basically just giving up in the lip sync. So instead, we're given one of the most abrupt cuts in any lip sync ever. And I think they were just at a loss for how they could cover this up. In the casket. This cut of them cutting the entire Nikki verse, Jinx teleporting across the stage, it looks like a YouTube edit. It looks like they're trying to get around copyright. This was probably Drag Race editing at its worst, but I totally understand why they did it. I'm more crushed that we'll never see the full performance because I know that this was probably a greatest of all time if we actually saw Monet's performance. It's been a year, guys. The check has cleared for Jinx. I'm happy that Jinx won, but please, please, can we just see the extended version of this? That's about it for me. Like I said, there's a lot more clips, so I'll probably do another one of these these videos in six months or like a year or something. At the end of the day, I think we're really spoiled with the Drag Race edit because even at its worst, it's so stylized, it's so well paced, it's so funny. There's nothing like it on TV and I think the editors and the edit in general is leagues above any other show. My other reality show obsessions like Big Brother, I love the game, but actually watching the episodes, it's not as fun to me because they just aren't as funny. They aren't nearly as snappy, it's more natural I guess, but at the same time it's just not interesting interesting to me. So thank you Drag Race for scratching an itch in my brain that nothing else can scratch. I appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon with another video.